In this video, we're going to learn about head recursion versus tail recursion in C. So a recursive function is a function which calls itself to solve a problem. And head recursion and tail recursion are two different types of recursive functions. Let's go over examples of recursive functions which use head recursion, tail recursion, and an example which uses neither. Let's start off by going over an example of a recursive function which uses neither head or tail recursion. We'll create simple functions to find the sum of the integers from one to n. So if n is five, the sum of the integers from one to n is five plus four plus three plus two plus one, which is going to be equal to 15. So a typical recursive solution to this problem would look like this. We would have int sum, and the sum function is going to return the sum of the integers from one to n. The function is going to accept as an argument n, so we'll have int n for the parameter. And the function is going to return n plus the result of calling the sum function with n minus one. So if we call the sum function with let's say five, this is going to give us five plus sum when it's called with four. And sum when it's called with four is going to give us four plus sum when it's called with three. And this is going to give us three plus sum when it's called with two, and so on. And we can see that we're performing exactly the sequence of addition operations that we want because we have five plus four plus three and so on, and we want five plus four plus three and so on. But we want plus one to be the last addition operation that we perform. So eventually, we want recursion to stop. So here we'll have a special case. We'll have if n is equal to zero, then we're going to return zero. Otherwise, we're going to return n plus sum when it's called with n minus one. Now, as before, the function is going to perform a sequence of addition operations, but eventually the function is going to call itself with zero. At that point, the function is just going to return zero and recursion is going to stop. We call this case where recursion stops the base case. We call this case where the function calls itself the recursive case. Let's test out this function. Down here, we'll output using printf the return value. So I have here percent %d to output an int, followed by a new line with backslash n, and we'll call the sum function with five as an argument. We'll save a program, and we'll compile it, and then run it, and we do get 15, so the function is working. So this solution is likely the most typical recursive solution to this problem, but this solution is using neither head or tail recursion. A recursive function which uses head recursion has the recursive function call as the first statement of the function and only the recursive function call with no operations working with the return value of the function call. So let's implement a solution which uses head recursion. Here we'll have int sum head where the function is going to return the sum of the integers from one to n. We'll again have the parameter n, and the parameter n is going to play the same role as the parameter n in our last solution, but now we're going to have a second parameter called result. And we're going to accumulate the result of the addition operations using this parameter. So in the function body, we'll have as our first statement, sum head n minus one, and result plus n. So the function is going to keep calling itself with n minus one. So as before, we'll have five, then four, then three, then two, and so on. But this time, we're adding n to this parameter result. And the idea is that we're building up the return value of the function in this result parameter. And initially, we're going to call some head with our initial n value and result set to zero. Now eventually, we do want to return that result. We want to do that once n reaches zero. So here we'll have if n is greater than zero, 
then we're going to return the result of calling this function. Otherwise, we're going to return result. So this here is the base case where recursion is going to stop. And this here is the recursive case where the function is going to call itself. And what makes this head recursion is that the first statement of the function is the function calling itself with no operations working on the return value of that function call. Now it's okay to have a return here and it's okay if that first statement is inside an if statement like this but we can't perform operations with the return value of the function call like this example. If we do that, it's not considered head recursion. And this function call has to be the first statement in the function. Let's test out this function. Down here, we'll now call some head and we'll provide it with the second result argument zero. We can save our program and compile it and try it out. And again, we'll get 15. So this head recursion solution is also working. A function which uses tail recursion has the recursive function call as the last statement of the function and only the recursive function call with no operations working with the return value of that function call. So a solution which uses tail recursion could look like this. We'll have here int sum tail and the function is again going to return the sum of the integers from one to n and again, we'll have the parameter n that's going to play the same role as before. And again, we'll have a parameter result that is going to play the same role as it did in our sum head function. And this time here, we'll have if n is equal to zero, then we're going to return the result. Otherwise, we're going to return the result of calling sum tail with n minus one and results plus n. So in this solution, we have our base case here. If n is equal to zero, we stop recursion and we return the result. And result is used the same as with sum head, where with each function call, we're going to accumulate the result of the next addition operation. Now this second part here is the recursive case. And in the recursive case, we have the function call to sum tail. Now this here is the last statement in the function and there's no operations that occur to the return value of this function call. That's what makes this tail recursion. Again, it's okay that we have this return here and it's okay that that last statement is part of this else here. Let's now test out this function. In main, we'll now call some tail. So we'll have some tail and we'll save our program and compile it and try it out. And again, we'll get 15. Now what's special about tail recursion is that we can easily eliminate tail recursion and replace it with an iterative solution that uses a loop. We can place the code for the function inside a loop that is set to repeat forever. And then instead of calling the function, we can assign the arguments for the function call to the parameter variables directly. Let's eliminate the tail recursion in our example. So up here, I'm first going to include the stdbool.h library so I can use the value true. Then here, I'll copy this and we'll call this function sumtail modified. And then we'll wrap the code in this function inside a loop that's going to repeat forever. So I'll have here while true and we'll put this code inside that loop body. Then we're going to replace this function call. Instead of calling sum tail and providing n minus one for n and result plus n for result, we're going to have result is equal to result plus n and we'll have n is equal to n minus one. And we just assign to the parameter variables the arguments to the function call because really calling sum tail and providing new arguments for n and result is kind of like just running this code again, except with a new result value and a new n value. And again, we're going to stop the function when n is equal to zero. So we'll delete this and then we'll try this function out. So then down here in main, we'll call our sum tail modified function. We'll have sum tail 
modified, and we'll save our program and compile it and try it out. And again, we get 15. So typically speaking, we use recursion because it allows us to express some algorithms in a more readable and easier to understand way. But there is a potential problem with using recursion. When a function call is made, all the information for the function call, such as the parameter values and the return value, is kept track of in a place called the call stack. The call stack has a limited amount of memory, but recursive functions might involve so many function calls being made that the stack runs out of memory and an error called a stack overflow error occurs. Let's modify our tail recursion example to cause a stack overflow error. We'll call some tail with an end value of 1 million. Now we're going to replace the type int with the type long because the resulting value is going to be so large. So here we have 1 million for n and we'll use percent %ld here now because we're going to use the type long instead. Then up here with some tail, we'll change the type to long. So instead of int, we'll have long and long, and the function is going to return a long as well. Where long is like int, but it can store a greater range of integers. So we'll save this, compile our program, and run it. And this time we get segmentation fault 11. And what's happened is a stack overflow error. An n value of 1 million caused so many function calls to occur that the call stack ran out of memory. We could use some tail modified with an n value of 1 million. We'll change the type to long as well. So here we'll have long and long and a return value of type long as well. And then we'll call some tail modified with an n value of 1 million. So we'll have some tail modified. And if we save our program and compile it and run it, it does work. And that is the correct value. So this tells us that our recursive function could successfully compute the value if it was converted to iterative code that uses a loop. It turns out the compiler can make this optimization for us. Let's actually change this back to a some tail function call. So here we'll have some tail. And I'm going to compile the program again after saving it. But this time, I'm going to use another compiler option. I'm going to have GCC dash capital O and then two. This is going to use level two optimizations when compiling our program. Then we'll have dash O, D, and D dot C. We'll then run the program. And look at this. Instead of an error occurring due to stack overflow, this time we got the correct answer. And that's because the level two compiler optimizations are going to eliminate the tail recursion of this function and replace it with an iterative solution. If we compile the program without using this option, the compiler is just going to try to compile the program as fast as possible. If we use this option, the compiler is going to take extra time to apply optimizations, including eliminating tail recursion. We can actually see the tail recursion being eliminated if we output the assembly code from the compiler. So first, we'll have GCC and then dash S to output the assembly code. Then we'll have dash O, D, T, D dot C. So this is going to output the assembly code for the version of the program where the tail recursion has not been removed. Then we'll have GCC dash S then dash O2, then dash O, D E, and then D dot C. And that's going to output the assembly code for the version of the program where tail recursion has been eliminated and replaced with iterative code. So let's look at our function again. Up here, we have some tail. Let's also open those files. So we'll open up the D E and D T files. And if we look at DE, where tail recursion has been eliminated, there's no call here. There's jumps, but there's no call. If we look at DT, where tail recursion has not been eliminated, we can see the call down here. There's this call to the function sumtail. 
But if we look at the version where tail recursion has been eliminated, we only have jumps because jumps are used to implement iterative code, such as loops. So we can actually see the tail recursion being eliminated. So in general, we favor using tail recursion over head recursion because the compiler can remove tail recursion for us automatically, which could prevent a stack overflow error from occurring. But some algorithms may be easier to understand if they're written as tail recursive functions. So we would still get that benefit of using recursion too. So this is head versus tail recursion in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.